Equal Worlds, beautiful day on campus here in New York, right in the middle of a snowstorm. Today, uh, I want to tell you about Tabby Star. There's been a new paper that's just come out, and it seems to have resolved some of the mysteries about this bizarre star. Okay, I've come back inside so you can actually hear what I'm saying now. For those of you who don't remember what Tabby Star or Biagin Star is, we've actually done a few videos about it here on this channel, so I'm going to put a link down below for a playlist where you can watch and catch up with all of our previous material about this fascinating star. But in a nutshell, the star exhibited large, weird, and unexplained dips in brightness over a span of about four years during which the Kepler telescope observed it. What really caught the imagination of the public though was the idea that this star could literally be in a nutshell contained within some giant alien megastructure that was hypothesized by Freeman Dyson and others years prior. The new paper, led by Professor Tabitha Boyajian and the very same team that discovered the original dips, shows now four new dips discovered by Earth-based telescopes, namely the Las Cumbres Observatory. What's cool is that this observing run was funded by a Kickstarter campaign, and so the names of these dips were voted on by the backers as a reward. So for example, the first dip is called LC, which is a play on the letters LC, which is sometimes used by astronomers to abbreviate the phrase light curve. Now these are the first dips seen of this star since the Kepler mission ended, and we discussed the discovery of those dips back on this channel last year. You can click up here to get that. One thing which hasn't really changed is that there doesn't appear to be any repeatability or pattern to the periodicity of these events yet. One possible explanation, aside from aliens, is that there is a crap load of dust just passing in front of this star periodically and causing these dips. Much like a snowstorm, the dust blocks out sunlight and thus can make the star appear dimmer for short episodes of time. Actually, in the original paper by Biagin et al, they hypothesized that a family of comets could be in orbit of the star, falling apart, disintegrating, and that could be the source of dust which causes these dips. Well, the new paper certainly adds weight to this hypothesis, since the first dip shown here, called ELSI, was observed with both a blue and a red filter on the telescope. And you can see here that the dips show large differences. Now this is actually consistent with what dust would do, since the degree of scattering now depends on the wavelength or the color of light which is passing through the dust. An everyday example of this effect is when one looks at the sun setting on the horizon and one gets to enjoy these beautiful red and orange hues as the sun sets although maybe not on a day like today. Two things explain this. One is that the sun is on the horizon, and so light from the sun has to travel through more of the Earth's atmosphere in order to reach us. Two, blue light is scattered much more effectively than red light by the Earth's air molecules, a process known as Rayleigh scattering. Together then, far less of the blue light makes it through the Earth's atmosphere, creating this spellbinding red appearance. The same thing is happening around Tabby's star. This giant dust cloud is blocking out more of the blue light than it is of the red light. And so when we look at these dips with a blue filter, they appear to be much deeper than they would be with the red. But this isn't the end of the story. I mean, for one thing, we don't know whether this theory is absolutely correct yet. It's just the best idea we can think of to explain the data in hand. If this chromatic behavior can be reobserved in future dips, particularly if at finer grades of color, that would add even further credence to this hypothesis. But another problem here is that even if we assume that dust is indeed the source of the observed chromasticity, that still doesn't really explain where the dust comes from. Was it a giant planet-planet collision, or was it a swarm of comets, or perhaps it was a disintegrating eccentric planet? Something really weird is happening around this star, and this new data doesn't actually change that fact. A final point of reflection I want to share with you guys is that even though we have this simple, natural explanation for what's happening here, technically, Technically, this doesn't actually rule out alien megastructures, despite what is being reported out there. There is no legitimate reason why alien megastructures couldn't also be chromatic. 
I mean, after all, we have no idea what the properties of an alien megastructure are. But the danger with that line of thought is that you can essentially levy this argument about anything. I mean, I could say that today's snowstorm is the result of some kind of alien activity. But, you know, why would you reach for such an elaborate explanation when we have a simple, coherent, natural one to explain very nicely what is happening out there. And this touches on a very general problem facing our quest to perhaps detect alien civilizations one day. We would likely never be able to take a particular star or a particular planet and say to 100% confidence that that planet or that star does not have an advanced alien civilization around it. I mean, in the most pathological scenario, an advanced civilization could be there, but they could be cloaking and hiding themselves. And that's actually an idea that we postulated a couple of years ago and talked about here on this channel. But on the other hand, just because we can't rule out, exclude aliens, doesn't mean that we can't detect them. For example, if a nearby asteroid in the solar system suddenly ignited thrusters and changed direction, I mean, it'd be very difficult to explain that naturally. Likewise, if we receive a sequence of prime numbers through a radio transmission from a distant star, it'd be almost impossible to explain that without invoking aliens. But I wanna hear what you guys all think because this is an area of active debate. What would it take to convince you that an alien civilization had been unambiguously discovered? And on the other hand, what would it take to convince you unambiguously that a planet absolutely does not have an intelligent civilization on it? Or do you think it's even possible to do that? So thank you so much for watching this video, everybody, and happy 2018 to everybody out there. Let me also just say a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel so far and to those of you that regularly engage in the comments section below. It's that kind of participation that you know really inspires me to keep making these videos. So a huge thank you to that. So until the next video, stay thoughtful everybody and stay curious.